So look, we have some questions from our Discord community where we have exclusive content for our Discord uh, followers. Um, this is just four questions that kind of get us to land together. Uh, they're not on the topic at all. So the first question I'm going to throw out there for you right now is, what is your favorite toy as a child? I'm very ashamed to say it was a TV. I watched six hours of TV every day, got home from school, did the, my homework as fast as possible, sat down in front of the TV and watched anything until the screen went blank at two o'clock in the morning. <sighs> Do and I don't know how my parents let. Oh well, they didn't let me do it because I would sit. I would be the last two hours. I would have it on the first dot of volume, <laughs> and any time I heard my 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 stepdad sort of roll over in bed and the floor would creak, I'd be like, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> up. and then I had him go back to sleep. And I was like, one dot of volume. <laughs> <laughs> you you must have picked up some of your storytelling skills and narratives and being able to paint, you know, alternate realities because of that. I imagine if that was hundred percent. Yeah. Cause at the end of it, like, you know, back in the nineties, uh, you know, but after 12 o'clock there was nothing on. And so I used right. to just click, there was nothing of, of uh, that you'd want to stay on, uh, stay watching. And so, but I didn't want to go to bed, and I just had to have this more of this drug. So I would flick the uh, the through the channels like this, like uh, one second everything, and I would make up these to see if every frozen moment I could tell what was going on, like these film stills, these moments. Because sometimes it would be like when the, the the hero of the shot is right in the middle, and he's talking to the camera, or it might be one where he's just sort of over here, <laughs> and and judging whether it was color or whether it's black and white or the style of the clothes to see what era it was in. And I would see then if he went through it, would they make a different story? Like you'd be going from a um, a Fellini movie to a tampon commercial to a to whatever it is, and it was just this game i played <laughs> okay so let's bring it back to the discord questions and this is a favorite and i don't know if this is a big part of your life or something you really even think about yeah. what's your star sign uh virgo scorpio rising whoa that's all i know hey, there it is handful okay. Do you ever think about what joy. that means it was it more like you just you know people are gonna ask so you have to say no, no, no. My, my, my studio manager, who's been with me for about uh, 13, 14 years now, she is a massive uh, astrologer, I mean, astronomer, astrologist, 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 yeah. And um, so she, I mean, we when we used to interview assistants, she would say, don't come in yet. Let me interview them first. And then if they're okay, I'll call you to come into the room. And I would just listen at the door. And the first question would be like, what time were you born and where were you born? And, uh, and so, oh, and then she'd text me and go, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So Alexi, one of the questions the community also likes to ask is, and I think you've actually already mentioned a couple superpowers in my opinion, but uh, what you would consider to be your superpower? Uh, yeah, you're right. I think I might have answered it. I think it's just, uh, it's, a, it's a superpower and a curse. It's, it's the sort of over the high, um, like, what do you call it? Hypersensitivity to what's going on in the, in the room or, or energy. I don't want to say it's energy because then it sounds like, ooh, I'm, you know, reading everybody's vibe or auras, but <laughs> I can, I can just, I, I'm so, because at school I was such a sort of loner and I watched everybody and then being an assistant and seeing that on a grown up level and watching everybody. You do, it becomes a muscle that you just can't switch off. And so that's yeah. this idea, which actually, as a photographer now, is incredible because you know if somebody on set is not feeling heard or lit or, or something's not going right or the model is feeling like, you know, she's she or he is being, they might not want to do with what they're being asked to. And you can mm -hmm. immediately read that and then you can balance out the thing again and sort of check if everybody's okay. And You're in good company because all of us <laughs> mm -hmm. actually understand that. I yeah, think all of us sort yeah. of the reason why we love this podcast so much is we all kind of come from the margins and we do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. We're very sensitive. We're also, you know, trying to figure out what that's all about. Like, why is it, a, you know, are we psychic? Is it because definitely when you're <laughs> able to read as empathetic as you probably are i'm not sure you know we'll get into that later too because i do want to know where, exactly yeah that's what you know, it is where you feel things and it's not even psychic yeah. it's actually being proven you know babies cry when one baby cries they all start crying you know we're, we're actually mm -hmm. hardwired for empathy um it just extending from our blood ties to our tribal ties to the blood you know national ties to global ties finally so we're moving into this like you know worldwide empathetic 
planetary space yeah. and consciousness, but definitely not everyone's designed actually like this. So it's interesting mm -hmm. that you, you got that, you got that, you got hit with the empathy stick. Congratulations. Oh. Curse and blessing, <laughs> all in well, one. even, and even if you don't like, I, I'm sure you've learned to pick up a lot of like that micro micro facial just kind of communication mm -hmm. like the nonverbal communication over time but i it's like i don't know i wouldn't call it a disorder but like hyper observant disorder is like kind of like the term that comes to mind but like right. i because i would I'll, I'll have meetings sometimes and i see this person in the corner and i'm like it feels like you want to say something and it's not really mm -hmm. a feeling it's just like you clearly look like you want to say something, yeah. please. And then you invite them to say something or or be a part of the conversation or whatever. But it is true that a lot of times those people are so used to being forgotten or ignored or just not observed right. that they yeah they're comfortable in the corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think you know I think there's one uh, human. I imagine this is a human thing that we all want to be seen and we want to be heard. Oh. And yeah. so, so right I think. There. So I think if you are somebody who recognizes that, that's a massive uh, blessing for to be in a room with you to to you know mm -hmm. be noticed by you. Mm -hmm. Makes it a safe place. Um, so when you're not, um, you know, busy managing a room full of creative people, talented, smart, you know, often very famous, what do you do for yourself? What's a creative outlet or a hobby or what's something you enjoy doing that is re-energizing for you? I think in in terms of. Um, replenishing your soul and sort of yes. feeding the battery that 100 100 being with my kids absolutely just like off the chart you know i can't think of anything that i would rather do than just hang out with them and chat to them and and we talk like this me and my two boys and it's so cool because they're getting to that age now they're 12 and 9 two boys and we moved into the to the countryside about two and a half years ago and now we have to drive to school mm. So whereas when we used to live in New York City, it was this mad, you know, running out the door, crossing the road, watch out, taxi, go, and it was like this sort of mad dash to school, like 10-minute run. And now you get in a car, and it's 25 minutes just down this nice country lane to the school. So we get all this beautiful time to talk. And being able to talk to them, and for some reason, I'm just lucky that they are, um, I mean, nature, nurture, who knows, but they they are deep. And they they want to talk about this stuff, and they want to talk about life and death. And but to go back to the creative thing, um, writing a hundred percent, writing poetry, writing prose, writing yeah, anything. It just it's such a and it's only something. It's something I loved, always loved doing, but it was so buried because mm. I was a straight English male. <laughs> don't feel and, it. don't feel not things. a lot of room for it right no, yeah, don't feel things and also you're a fashion photographer stay in your lane don't get any ideas that you need to be out there you know <laughs> and then i met my wife and again i felt this stuff and i wanted to write her poem after about three months and i thought crap i'm, I'm, I'm gonna scare her away this is gonna be a nightmare but i couldn't but again i can't you know you can't help yourself and you're just in the flow of this thing so i remember writing it and i gave it to her with such trepidation that she was going to be like sort of like oh crap she's about to say goodbye and she opened it she read the first two lines started bawling her eyes out and i was like i am gonna marry you yeah <laughs> poetry, poetry wins. i love it. poetry for the win I, oh. it. I decided in order to as you say like plant this garden invest in this garden to make the to make the marriage work, I thought, right, what am I going to set in place, Virgo style, uh, that's going to work? And so I thought, right, instead of doing an anniversary, because it's such a long time to to separate, uh, to a long time to wait to celebrate your marriage, yeah. we did a month anniversary, or I did a month anniversary. So on the month, on the eighth of every month, I would give her a rose because she liked a rose. I would give her an unpierced pearl, um, which I so I, be, I became a bit of a connoisseur of pearls, of, yeah. weirdly enough. <laughs> I had this pearl dealer who used to come to New York. Yeah, and every time she came in, she would have been, <laughs> take out these pearls and goes, well, this is from Tahiti. And this one is from, you know, blah, blah, blah. And um, so I give her a pearl every every month. Uh, and it was this, the idea behind it was that it was like a, a physical representation of the growth of our love. Mm -hmm. So every month, she'd pop a new one into this glass jar on her bedside table. And you could see your love grow. I, I, I should preempt this that I'm cheesy as a mofo. Not okay? at all. You're in the it's greatest. Hey. First of all, we're all cheesy. 
And then I guess we all are. Yeah. We got Disney. <laughs> we've got Disney lovers here. We're basically <laughs> like we're submersed in alternate realities of fantasy. Yes. All of us. So right. congratulations. Oh, You're in the good crowd of yes. cheesiness. And yeah. I, I love that, Alexi. And one of my relationships, well we actually ended up putting throughout the entire year statements in a jar that we would want to read towards the end of the year about each other mm. or a question. Uh, that's love that, yeah. And then towards Christmas time, we'd open it up and then read what we collected over the years, the memories, the questions. It was it was fantastic. That's a beautiful I idea. Yeah. Oh so yeah. We're on the cheese, we're on the cheese board here. We hey. the cheese oh, yeah. board. It's it's a whole <laughs> <some> charcuterie. <laughs> <laughs> 